Hey you guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Janae Bless and this is another episode of Yoga Talk. Today on Yoga Talk, I have my friend Ethan. Welcome Ethan. Thank you, thanks for having me. Hey everyone. Yes, I'm so excited <laughs> about this video um, and even just like this series in general. This is not something that I like sat down and planned. It kind of just flowed and I love when things flow in a way and they just start to work. Um, so this series yoga talk is basically me partnering up with other people who are active in the yoga community or at least have a yoga practice and just talking about different principles and um, aspects not just in yoga but kind of like yoga philosophy and like how we're applying them in our life mm. so today we're talking about abundance and I invited Ethan to do this video with me because one, to give you some background about Ethan and I's relationship, we met at Black Swan Yoga, which is the yoga studio here in Houston that we both teach at. And I have been teaching at Black Swan since they opened in Houston. When, oh, cool. When did you start? Uh, I started late 2016, so okay. almost three years in November. Okay, cool. Same yeah. for me. I actually oh, started cool. in November. <laughs> Yeah. Look at that. We started at the same time then. Okay, cool. Perfect. Yeah, super so, cool. Yeah, we started both working at Black Swan and I guess last year you started to be manager at Black Swan? Yeah, it started about a year in, like October 2017 is when I stepped into management mm -hmm. when we opened Kirby's, so the second okay. location in Houston. Um, and I was up there till about a week and a half ago uh, where I left my salary. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like another huge thing I know everyone <laughs> that's another big thing that we're talking about today if you haven't seen my video already about how I quit my job to become YouTube famous you should definitely go check out that video because it talks about me <laughs> look down below it talks about me leaving my job that was paying me four thousand dollars a month to pursue my dreams of having a popping YouTube channel and being a full-time yoga teacher, sharing yoga and holistic living, um, which is like so scary. Totally. And I was talking to Ethan because since I quit my job, I've been picking up more yoga classes. And so I've been able to reconnect with a lot of people that I haven't seen in a while or like even really been able to talk to. And come to find out, Ethan also quit his job, his salary job. Um, we don't know how much Ethan was making and we won't make Ethan disclose that yeah. uh -huh. But I mean that's still a really big deal to step away from something that gives you so much security, right? Right, and it's it's fearful and it's uh, it's kind of crazy I was wrestling with this idea right this idea that if I don't have security or if I don't know exactly what's coming in that I I could not function or that I uh, that's you know that I couldn't be an adult mm -hmm. um, and I let fear hold me back for a long time it, it kept me at bay even when I felt the call to leave um, earlier than mm -hmm. I did um, and and that's the biggest thing is as you grow older you I, I wanted to feel more comfortable and more secure um, foundationally as a as an adult as a person and i found that i was letting security and money drive my mentality and kind of curb my happiness wow yeah fear is such a big part that plays in i guess all decision making because like we don't know what's on the other side and then two having the security of having like i guess that paycheck because that's just really like the big thing like you're like okay well how am i going to start making money how am i going to still be able to maintain the lifestyle and it's like okay some things you're going to have to cut back on like there's a lot of things you have to think about and like kind of like take some time to i guess figure out what your next move is going to be and like really kind of be strategic about it but everything you don't really have planned out it's just kind of like you set things up you're like this makes sense and then you make the decision right how long were you thinking about quitting your job i think i told myself initially um that i would leave in april okay and, and right august. now it's august you guys so may june july three months yeah at least but so um, wait but you told yourself you're gonna leave in april right when did you decide that you were gonna leave in april i think like January. Are you serious? <laughs> I think so. Oh my god. I think that's when I started realizing like um, 
um, that maybe I wasn't meshing with what was expected, mm -hmm. that I, um, you know, made sense at the time, that um, what was what was needed of me wasn't what I could deliver because I, I wanted to set boundaries and limits for myself so that I had a, a balance between the two, between mm -hmm. my personal life and between work life. Mm -hmm. And so I was very expressive about what I wanted and what I needed mm -hmm. and it didn't necessarily uh, line up, um, but based on other factors, I kind of just, I just stayed to help as I could, to mm -hmm. be as involved as I could mm -hmm. while keeping myself at bay and keep giving myself um, limits, Yeah, you know? Mm -hmm. So probably at least half a year before it actually happened, maybe wow. even longer. Were you doing anything else other than managing or were you just managing? Managing and, and teaching. So okay. I, I taught, I picked up a corporate client, um, some privates here and there. Mm -hmm. And I actually did transition. I started teaching at another studio for a little bit, okay. and that was going to open up more more doors. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. it didn't quite work out. Mm -hmm. And so, as as I was kind of aligning things and making sure that everything could line up, so that I could step away and I'd have all these things, stuff would fall away, or the mm -hmm. things wouldn't necessarily work out. Mm -hmm. And so that kept me there. It kept me tethered. It was mm -hmm. the fear of like, well, if this didn't work out, then I have to stay. Right. Um, but what's been really cool is now that, uh, it was, it was a quote that came to me, it's, uh, leave and the net will catch you, right? Mm. And so, um, about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, sat down with the owner, we decided, like, this is, this is now the time to separate, mm -hmm. um, and it's been insane how happy I am, how much time I have to explore all these other creative outlets mm -hmm. and reconnect to myself, reconnect to people I haven't seen in a long time. Mm -hmm. And all of these opportunities are arising where I, I wasn't available for them. Yeah. Maybe not even seeking them, but yeah. as soon as that opened up, as right. soon as I finally let go, instead of like, <laughs> Oh my God. As soon the as sound I, effects <laughs> that Ethan made. Like, <laughs> oh. They're all real. Uh, when I finally let go, it's been just, it's this abundance of opportunity mm -hmm. uh, that I would, I guess I would not have been receptive to or available right, for. Right, if you were still stuck working right. that nine to five job. Right. Mm -hmm. So did something happen that made you feel comfortable to step away from the job? Like, did you get any security anywhere else that made you feel comfortable? Like, it doesn't even have to be like you got another job, but did something, no. like, did something happen? Something had to happen. I think, I think I, it's like, um, my dog died like three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I know, it was so sad. Sorry. Surprise everyone, sorry. R.I.P. In that moment, I, when I like watched him pass, mm -hmm. I was like, there's so many things like I want to do that I'm not doing. Or mm -hmm. there's so, there's so many times I like withhold love or withhold affection or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. I'm mm -hmm. not moving. I'm not, I'm trying to block myself or protect myself and really like anything, life is done in mm -hmm. a second. Yeah. And we don't know when that's going to happen. And I think when that happened, that's when I was okay to let, let, things go, let things die, and, and move on. That weren't making you happy. Right. Honestly, something like that happened to me too. Really? I feel like so many people have been passing away, Ugh. and there, there hasn't been people that I know directly, but it's people that Spike and I have either worked with, or maybe we're going to work with, and like had meetings, and the last person passed away, and it was like the last person you would think that would be passing away. And I remember thinking like, you just never know. Like if God says time is up, time is up. And when that, when the last person had passed away, I remember me and Spike are always saying life is short and then you're on life support. <sighs> and so, and that's a Jay-Z um, lyric. And so he passed away and I was like, and actually this is actually, this happened right after I quit my job. It was like the day after I quit working for Spike. Wow. And that was like confirmation for me. It was like, life is short. You literally never know when you're gonna be taken away. It doesn't matter how much yoga I do, how much juice I drink, how good of a person I am. If God says time is up, time is up. Totally. And I don't wanna die 
not doing something like not happy because i was miserable like literally it was like night and day and spike would be like you are such a bitch during the day and at night you're like cuddling you want to like be all under me uh -huh. but like during the day i don't know who the fuck you are oh my god and it was true like literally i would wake up and i'd be like oh i gotta go do this again mm. and i had like the greatest job ever like i got to go out and be creative and uh produce a lot of cool things and work with a lot of cool people and travel but that is like not my dream yeah and so i don't I, I think for me like i'm so young and then also watching all of these people pass away at such a young age as well um kind of just like settling for whatever and not really taking the reins of their life i just really got to thinking and i was like i can do this yeah. like i have nothing to lose right now i have nothing to lose so i was that's for me it's just the death thing i think just seeing people kind of it's like and it's a great yeah. it's a great example of what it is to like have to let go mm -hmm. like when things reach their end how often do we hold on and grasp and like mm -hmm. cry out like no no i need this mm -hmm. i have to be here yeah um instead of just letting yeah, it go release. it's just the natural way of life right hashtag the lion king <laughs> you haven't seen it go see it I want to talk about now kind of the space we're in because mm -hmm. in some ways we're not we don't have a safety blanket anymore like we're both still teaching yoga but like y'all teaching yoga does not pay the bills unless you were teaching like 20 classes a week which i can't even imagine i used to do that i did that a year ago and that was like i wanted to yeah. like i think about it now and i always think back to when i had committed to teaching yoga full-time it's like i had decided that's what i wanted to do i made the space for it like my mind was set up around it but it was crazy it's and so much driving um, it's so much exertion of energy y'all i think i have old vlogs where you can literally see how exhausted oh. i was man and like even now um when I first quit my job, I'm so used to working. Okay, you guys, I have had a job since I was 16. I know that many other people have had to work much earlier, but I did get my first job at 16. And then when I was 17, I think I started working two jobs. And that's like when I started like really, I just, I think I just liked working. Um, and like, I liked making money, like I love that. So I was working two jobs from 17, really up until now. Um, and so I'm just like, you know, used to working, used to like keeping busy, used to like having my own money. Um, and when I quit working the job for Spike, I immediately started picking up all these classes. Mm -hmm. And then I taught last week, I taught 15 classes. And I was like, girl, you are falling back into the cycle. And this is not why you quit your job. You did not quit your job to go back to teaching yoga full time. But I think also there was a sense of fear still kind of like swirling inside of me that was like, okay, I need to create a yeah. safety blanket for myself. Yeah. But it's like, I can only teach so many yoga classes. And honest, when is that safety blanket? Like how many yoga classes do I have to teach to create a safety net? Because I still have to pay bills every single month. I still got to put gas in my car, food in my belly, you know, other shit. Like you're... I don't want to say you're you're I'm never going to be able to create that safety net because I am, but I think it's about investing in things, also including my time, not just my money, but my energy, my time, my money and things that I know are one going to make me happy, something that I can be consistent with and like steady with uh versus going to work a job just to get money. Totally. And when you're thinking about that it's like um in this in this space of abundance of like uh, trusting the universe to provide we also have to cut back on like what we the life that we knew when we had yeah. security when we had four thousand dollars coming in a month mm -hmm. right all the all the like extraneous things you're spending on i'm sure you're not doing that anymore well, right I had to cut off a lot <laughs> You know, and yes. um, but also you can't live in the fear of like, well, I can't do anything ever. Mm -hmm. But there are little things you can do that are going to totally um, translate into really good habits mm -hmm. in the future. To, right. So that you don't backslide and have to work another job you don't like. Right. It's like I can shop for groceries and I can make sure that I eat at least two meals at home a day. Mm -hmm. 
or maybe I make sure that I eat all of the meals that I prepped all week and then I go out one night a week, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like little, little changes. It's it's not buying the shirt that you want or the right. sunglasses or that not, you could just get, yeah, whatever. Yeah, going out with your friend. Right. Every night. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it this, this kind of like translates um, into being more intentional with your time, more intentional with your energy, right? If, mm -hmm when you go out and you drink and you're partying you're gonna spend more money mm -hmm. and then the whole next day is probably ruined because you're hungover right so if you're not doing that kind of stuff you're more mindful about where your energy is going where your money's going and you have another day where you might have lost it right i don't know and it kind of it translates into like moving into a more yogic philosophy mindset mm. that will with everything we've been taught mm -hmm. that will always have our back if mm -hmm. we're always putting into the universe, the universe will put back into you. Did you want to define abundance? Yes, let's talk. Let's House of abundance. Abundance. I want to talk about abundance and I want to know what is your definition of abundance? Let's see what it actually says. Okay, yeah, that's a good, that's a good idea. Very large quality of something. How does that make you feel? I think in the way of, of this, it's like a very large quantity of trust. You know, mm -hmm. of um, a large quantity of preparation and time mm -hmm. and dedication has led me to this point where I am ready to uh, shed my skin, mm. so to speak, and and um, be available for, for next steps or, or for what is available. I think there is a difference between um, being fed up with where you are and quitting cold turkey yeah. and not having anything to fall back on. Yeah. Which I think at some point in time there needs to be that like mm -hmm. kind of redirection like oh maybe I don't need this I can go in a different direction but that's another conversation I think. Mm. I feel like you... it, I feel like it plays into this conversation. You think so too? Yeah because I mean for me I I had an idea like me doing YouTube is an idea like I'm actually not making money off YouTube right now. But but let's like, all look at the history of Janae. Yeah. Janae, since I've known her, has been editing films on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You've been putting up content on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You've been documenting your life. You make vlogs. You worked with Spike, who showed you how to set up all of this stuff, mm -hmm. right? So in your experience, you have all the tools you need to become a YouTube personality. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's not like you just jumped into it not knowing anything. Right. But I... But Which your whole true. life leading up to this yeah. was leading you to the moment where you could say, you know what, I'm done doing this for you, mm -hmm. so I can do it for myself. Right. Which is very true, and it's something that I knew. And for me, in regards to the definition of abundance, I think that I had an abundance of knowledge, abundance of equipment that was available to me, or resources rather, that made me feel comfortable enough to take that step. Mm -hmm. But then there's also, I don't even want to say that I have that fear of just being successful hmm. on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Like right now, the first hump that I have to get over is getting my channel monetized. Yeah. Meaning that I have to have X amount of watch time and then a certain amount of subscribers. Granted, I'm almost to that mark, but until I get to that mark, there still is something lingering that is kind of like, is this for real? Hmm. Is this what you're doing? Yes, it is. And so like as the days go on, I just I'm continuing even to like build my confidence, my trust and my belief that I can do this. Yeah. Like just do it. Like you can do it. It's okay. One day at a time. And I think it comes to what what is your mindset when you're thinking about abundance? Like mm -hmm. what is it that you have an abundance of mm -hmm. or what is it that you're focusing your mind to gain abundance of if it is always I will gain as much money as I can mm -hmm. or I will gain as many assets as I can it might be it might be the wrong direction of focus yeah you know mm -hmm. abundance for me I feel like it's just trusting and knowing that you have everything you need regardless of where you are even when you have nothing you have everything Mm. and knowing that if you need anything all you have to do is go out and get it and you have to just make up in your mind I need this and so you're gonna go get it. it's like if you're hungry if you're hungry you're not gonna 
wait around for someone to give you food, you're gonna go find some food mm -hmm. and you're gonna eat. Like if you want a million dollars, like it would be great if we could go find a million dollars today or tomorrow, but that's not how it happens. But I think the want and the need for it and like you making up in your mind that that's what you want, if you're really, like if you really do want it, like you're gonna go get it. And so I think it's kind of like abundant, the just knowing that it's there for you. Hmm. Makes me think of like, what then if I, cause I, nothing's really changed about like where I am now mm -hmm. and what I wanted. It was I wanted the same thing in January, but it's like, why, why did I have to wait for certain things to fall into place to do that? Mm -hmm. And what I've been shown is like just in this week, two weeks mm -hmm. of the transition, of the release, there have been so many things that have, um, popped up so many opportunities mm -hmm. and it's like well where would I be now if I would have just trusted my gut six seven eight months ago right yeah and like Weird. what was holding what holds us back from taking the leap when we know we need to take it mm -hmm. instead of waiting and struggling and holding mm -hmm. and sacrificing our our happiness or our, our I think it's a list of things. Yeah. Cause like even uh, we have another uh, coworker, Jackie, and we were talking to Jacqueline about mm -hmm. it. And Jacqueline started. She named a laundry list of things that are holding her back outside of just mental, like actual physical things in her body. All oh, right. That she's allowing to hold her back, but it all makes sense. But it's like it's so many little things that have built up, and it's like having to undo all of that like that is the actual work yeah you know what i'm saying um in order for like things to start making sense and clicking you're like hey once i work through this then i can do this which is like a whole nother conversation it's like you can just do it right now yeah but then i feel like society our society is like we're just doing so much and we i don't know in our in our heads i think we think we need this and that in order to in order to do X. Totally, we have and, to. Yeah. <laughs> we have to wake up and get a workout in, mm. and then eat a full breakfast, and then get ready for work and work all day, mm -hmm. and maybe eat during the day, and then mm -hmm. we have to get home and work out again, and mm -hmm. we have to have relationships and families and pets that we take care of, and we have to have extracurricular activities. Go on a trip, everything And else. I have to make dinner, yes. and I have to clean the home, and I have to get to bed, and you do it over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what are we doing all of this for? Because we've been told we have to. Mm -hmm. But I've literally never been happier than the past week of like, there's certain times I have to be certain places, but other than that, it's just like, <sighs> Whatever you bro, okay, honestly, that was so great that you just said that <laughs> because it is like you're in a routine every single day. Mm -hmm. And then when you let go of, if you like, once you decide to let go of that, it's literally like, what do I want to do right now? What is like the best thing and for me I to do? I force right myself now? to lay on a couch and listen to music mm -hmm. for two hours, mm -hmm. like not a TV. Mm -hmm nothing because i just wanted to enjoy like the moment of gratitude and, mm -hmm. and just abundance of time and it doesn't have to make sense to you who's watching this mm -hmm. to anyone else not even to your partner it doesn't have to make sense because some stuff you were like oh like some people will probably look at did us. you have did you have hesitation from who you from spike no spike was actually very supportive oh that's cool um and i'm there's so many things that have come to me and just letting people be yeah why did and I, I feel like even when i was in my little routine i would put that on spike it's like oh you're not waking up at 6 a.m you're not going to yoga you're not going to run later you're not eating this you're not doing that and he's like, I'm chilling. Mm. I'm like, no, we cannot be chilling right now. You need to be working. We need to be working right now. And it's like, that's not what he feels like doing. Stop putting your shit on him. Totally. Or on anyone else. And then you walk around and you just turn up your nose to anyone who's not doing what you're doing. Yeah. And it's really because you mad. <laughs> yeah. You mad because you can't 
stop yeah. in your head. You think you can't stop what you're doing. But if you did stop and take a second to really think about what you're doing, and like Ethan said, like, why are you doing it? Then, you know, then you can start to make actual adjustments and actually make progress. Yeah. Yeah. In the, in the way of like the direction will come, right? The, mm -hmm. the steps that you want to take will come. Just like Janae, she spent years working up to this point. Mm -hmm. And it's not just like she woke up one day and was like, I want to be a YouTube businesswoman. Mm -hmm. It's something she'd been working with and for and she had the right resources to take the time. Mm -hmm. It's not like all of a sudden I woke up and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to teach full time right now and drop everything. It's like I spent years practicing, y years training, years teaching before I was at this point where I had enough, uh, I had opportunities and I had um, put in the groundwork to where I could just kind of like take a step back and not do so much mm -hmm. and still be still be supported and be okay because of the foundational work that I have set yes. that Janae set it's because we're uh, you do the work so that you're ready for the opportunity put forth effort find ease mm. stira sukha yoga sutra 1.13 <laughs> look at her yeah well I want to know too, how does Lucas feel about, um, I guess, you leaving that position? Hasn't really like pushed back. I've been supported, you know? I think it's cool also because I'm just not like not sustaining myself, just like not making any money, just like bumming, smoking weed and, and not doing anything. It's mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm still moving forward. I'm still making enough money to pay what I need to pay, etc. And so um, it's kind of lifted a burden off of me so that I can put more focus into the relationship and, and more mm -hmm. focus into into the my family and into myself, which uh, they were all taking back burners really. Mm -hmm. um, but the support has been phenomenal because there's energy back in my step, you know? Mm -hmm. I've got more breath in my lungs and more sparkle in my eye. And you do seem more lively. Totally. And it's, you know, what's interesting too is, is we have to go through things. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know what role that job played in your life, but now you're here and like you have that experience. Totally. And like, regardless of what happened or how you feel about it, like you have that now. Yeah. And, you know, you can use that. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. For sure. What's next for Ethan? I'm loving my free time. Mm hmm. So, um,. Just still making the the uh, connections, mm -hmm. um, and I think in this time, like I I'm working on some passions of mine. So um, bought myself like uh, an audio interface and a mic and everything. I'm gonna start trying to record my own kind of music. Oh yeah, you were telling me that. Um, I would love I I like doing this. It's super fun. So mm -hmm. I might start a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like this and just have people come and speak mm -hmm. about spiritual things, mm -hmm. spirituality. Um, been taking dance classes. Oh, really? Yeah. Getting back to my roots as a theater kid, theater major, and uh, seeing with this free time if I can start to create my own content to get me where I want to be. Solid. Yeah. I'm such an advocate for that. Yeah. Just from people doing, like following, you know, their heart and doing the things that make them happy. I think if everyone were able to take the time to just follow their passions, like their true passions, I think everyone would be happier. Oh, yeah. I think the world would be a better place. I just, I think it's important that we take the time to just figure it out. And like all the motivational things I, um listen to on YouTube, like they give all this advice, but it's like, if you don't know your purpose, then like you can't really do, you're not really gonna be able to apply those things. And that's the thing too, is like, I might, I, you know, I can't say I will never go back into management. Right. I like developing people. I like being developed and mm -hmm. I, I like, I like making decisions and I like giving people good experiences. Mm -hmm. So I can't say like that, what that will never happen, but mm -hmm. the opportunity, uh, the position I was in at the time was not working for me. Mm -hmm. And um, 
where I am now is I can be at service and I can be available to to um, be where I need to be when I need to be there. Did you have something that was holding you back from from taking the plunge earlier? I mean, of course. I had, so I started working for Spike last year, like getting paid. And I think the fear of like what would happen to our relationship if I stopped working for him, mm. like maybe how he would feel. And like I didn't talk to him about, I couldn't really voice my opinion on certain things because I'm working for my boyfriend, like directly. So there were just some things that I kind of had to shut up about and like not say anything, mm -hmm. even though I wasn't happy about it. And I couldn't really express it to anyone um, because that's my, my boyfriend, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I kind of have to respect him and like also our relationship. And I can't be like talking shit about my boss who's my boyfriend to other people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't just make sense. So I didn't really talk about it. And I would share little things here and there, but I was never like really direct or I don't think that the emotion was there for even him to know that how I was feeling was serious mm. or even for me to even take myself seriously. Like there were some days I just kind of talked myself out of it. And I was like, girl, you better be grateful for this job. This is the best job, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like there were days i was just like you just need to do the work like if you just stay committed it's all going to work out things are going to get better i would like tell myself that and then like until things weren't getting better and it's not like things weren't getting better in the business because they were because we were working our ass off but things were starting to get worse for me mm. and i started to shut down i really low-key got depressed crying it was like it was it just got too deep that's and I was nice. like, girl, this has got to stop. Yeah. And so I had, I'm in a yoga teacher training right now. And she had a therapist come. Oof. Oh my God. We just did a lot of work. And there was a lot of crying and a lot of emotion coming up. And it was in that moment that I knew I had to like say something about how I was feeling, about my fears um, that had accumulated over the months. Um, really just about leaving the job and like in regards to our relationship because it had got so bad to where I didn't want to even live in our apartment. Mm. Because our office, we have a two bedroom apartment um, and the other, the second bedroom is the office. So I wake up and I go in the other room and I'm in there all day. And then when I finish work, I'm still in the apartment, which is where my job is, yeah. and also like where I live. And it just wasn't working. I just didn't, like I didn't want to be there. And so like me at the defense mechanism, me starting to feel these things, I was like, this is not right. I need to figure out what I need to do. But it was like, I don't want to break up with my boyfriend who I love. I don't want to move out of this apartment and go live back with my mom. Yeah. It was like something has got to give and I think it's this job. How long were you thinking that it was the job? Like how many months were you I wasn't like... thinking it was the job. Okay. I was because the job was paying me four thousand dollars a month. It could not be the job. <laughs> I'm you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It could not be the job. It had to be other things. Like it had to be spike. Hmm. It had to be the fact that we were still living in our workspace. It had to be X. It had to, it had to be everything other than the job. Yeah. But then I like, when we went through that whole thing that weekend in yoga teacher training, I, I gathered a list of questions and I realized that it was the job and it, me holding on to just that and not really, I don't know, trusting myself or knowing if I could really go on this venture and like do what I wanted to do, you know? I think that is what the fear was, but it took all of that for me to realize that. And that was like, that was low key, probably from the, probably from like January. Mm. I don't know when I started making $4,000 a month. I think it was maybe, I don't know, somewhere earlier in the year. But yeah, I think the moment I started making $4,000,
is when things started going downhill. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know that it was the job. I thought it was other things. But yeah. So what's next for Janae? Next is teaching yoga. I think developing more of my practice. And also, I feel like I'm really stepping into uh, who I am as a teacher, which feels so good. Mm -hmm. um, and then just really stepping up to the plate and like putting this shit together. Totally. Um, and like taking myself seriously. Because I think for a while it was like a joke. I think like the fear of also telling people like, yeah, I'm a YouTuber. It's like, what? Yeah, what? I do. I do YouTube. I make videos. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's like <laughs> people. People don't know. Like people still don't know that you can make money off the internet. Totally. And like for me, a lot of the people that I hang out with, they're much older. Um, and so I think that in some ways I still feel like a child. Mm. So that's like again a whole other conversation. But that also probably was a fear as well is like, I don't know, people thinking that I'm just not serious yeah. or legit or like what I'm doing is legit. But who gives a fuck? I don't care. Yeah, they're not doing it. Yeah, they're not doing it and they're not paying my bills. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> Can you do that, Ethan? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Well, I think this is good. Cool. I'm very happy with yeah, this conversation. Yeah, me too. Yeah, good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, this Janae. Is the one of many. It'll be interesting to look back in a few years and see like where we are. We'll either like be right. like the epitome of like what we're talking about, or we'll be a fucking homeless. <laughs> and everyone watching this will be like oh, those stupid fuckers. Don't fuck those yogis. <laughs> Trusting the universe. Oh, okay. <laughs> Trust the universe. No, trust the universe. Trust it, because it feels better anyway. Right. And like, I'm like, millennials, we should only have jobs three years at a time and then find something else to do. Right. Life's short. Life is short and then you're on life support. Do something that works and then move on. Mm -hmm. My teacher, um, Doc Midge, she's a drama teacher at the University of Oklahoma, Boomer Sooner. And she used to say, uh, you don't have to do anything in life mm -hmm. except two things which is pay taxes and die. Oh my god. That's it. That's all you have to do as a human. Wow. So like literally do anything you want. Right. Be who you want. And if something's not working for you, you can be like us and like wait for months or mm -hmm. take it from us. Like would you have, would, do you wish you would have left sooner? I wish, I think everything happened the way it was supposed to happen. I honestly, I do. I think that I had to go through all that for me to be strong and stay to here to be ready yeah. for real. Because I think if I would have did it earlier, like, you know, just uh, loosey goosey, like, made the decision, like, oh, I'm not happy here no more. Goodbye. Mm. I feel like that wouldn't have been it. Yeah. I feel like the energy would not have been right. Like, I probably would have been treated spike like shit. I definitely do feel like I am now. Uh, that things are working out and I'm like, well, would they have been this way eight months ago? But probably not. Probably not. I think just if you are looking to find something new, I think you should take the time to find it and really just decide if that's something that you want. And I think that once you decide it's something that you want, go for it. Lay the foundation. Yeah, lay the foundation, go for it, be in like, if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, y'all, you can always get a job. There's many jobs out there. You can also like take leaves. Like I don't know what kind of life you're out there living, but whatever, like it's gonna be there. But your life, like tomorrow could not be there. So if you can do it today, do it today. Don't wait. Again, thank you guys so much for tuning in to this video. If you are loving these talks the way that I'm loving these talks, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Let us know what you took from this video. Um, I will be sure to link all of your information thank so that you. they can check you out. You can follow Ethan on his journey. And until we meet again, peace, love, and all the light to you.